The mortgage market imploded following the mini budget, with over 1,600 products being removed from the market. Why? And what should you do in response? It happened basically because the cost at which lenders access funds, which they then loan onto you, suddenly became highly uncertain. And that happened because the cost of long-term government bonds spiked, basically because the debt and foreign exchange markets hated the tax cuts and extra borrowing announced by the Chancellor. Smaller lenders, whose costs are more linked to the bond market, withdrew their products first, because they had no idea if they'd be profitable by the time everything had settled. And that set off a domino effect causing large lenders to withdraw too, because they feared being swamped with demand. So what should you do? Well, if you can, then the best thing to do right now is nothing. It's too late to fix at low rates, and there are so few products at the moment, you won't get a good rate now. If you wait a few weeks for the market to settle, you'll have more options, almost certainly at higher rates than you could have done a couple of weeks ago, but better than you would get today. Of course, if the mortgage market did suddenly dry up long term, that would be bad news for house prices. But in this case, we know from the cause that it is only temporary. What about house prices? Well, we can both look at what's happening right now and we can project forward to what might happen next. Right now, the heat has certainly come out of the market. That's something we've talked about extensively over the last couple of months. But it's still hard to spot any indicators that could tell us that a collapse is on the way. Demand is down on earlier in the year, but still higher than it was a year ago. And supply is still very low. More listings are seeing reductions on their asking price, but the level is still only back to where it was pre-pandemic. So while the sentiment of the market has definitely changed a lot over the last couple of months, what all the different data points seem to be showing is, rather than a collapse or anything sinister, just a return to a normal market. We get used to things very quickly, but it's important to realise that the last couple of years in the market have been crazy. Demand and mortgage applications and price growth, everything has been so much higher than it would normally be that even though it now seems quite dramatic because we're seeing all those numbers coming back down again, all it's doing is taking us back down to where we would normally be all along and what in 2019 and before was entirely normal. So that's now, but what about the future? Well, rising mortgage rates puts downward pressure on house prices. That's pretty normal. But this is against a backdrop of there being a lot of demand and not a whole lot of supply. So you've got two forces pushing against each other. And in each specific mini market, it's going to be a case of which one of those wins out. What we're likely to see is that in high value areas where affordability is already stretched, we're going to see the impact of increasing mortgage rates have more of an effect. Whereas in markets where affordability is relatively better, we'll see less of an impact. If you average all that out and look at it on a national level, where's that going to leave us? Well, we've already said that the second half of this year will be way quieter than the first in terms of price growth and activity. It wouldn't surprise me if at a national level at some point over the coming months we saw a slight month-to-month -month drop in house prices. If that does happen, watch out for the media picking that up and going absolutely nuts with it. But if that did happen, then in itself it wouldn't really mean anything, especially when prices are already up more than 8% on the year. The point is you don't buy something only if you believe the value of that thing will go up in an uninterrupted straight line forever. And trying to catch the tops and bottoms of markets that would get too clever with timing rarely works out well. So none of this changes my long-term view. I'm buying right now for the first time this year to take advantage of the fact that there are more opportunities in the market now. My podcast co-host is doing the same thing, and so are lots of people in the Property Hub community. Let's move on to rents, which are still growing very strongly. The rate of that growth is peaking, but rents are still up 12.3% over the last year. And a big reason for that is that supply is at about half the five-year average. This should keep rents rising at the upper end of the market, where renters can afford increases, even if cost of living pressures hold back the bottom end. Increasing rents actually go a long way to offsetting the impact of mortgages becoming more expensive. I recently calculated that for one of my properties, a 14% rent increase would completely cancel out the effect of a 1% increase in my mortgage rate. Now, not everyone is going to be able to achieve a 14% increase, and it sounds like a lot, but if you don't review rents regularly, well, rents on average have already gone up by 12% or more this year alone, so it's not out of the question. On to politics, and given recent polls, the Labour Party's plans for housing are looking a lot more relevant than they did. The Labour Party recently held their party conference and announced what they're calling their renters charter. Now, a lot of what's in there is just re-announcing things that the current government has already committed to, but there are a couple of new things in there that are going to be of interest to landlords, and not in a good way. 
One of those would be the introduction of four month notice periods up from the current two months, which if on no fault grounds, like because you want to sell the property, I don't actually object to, because I do think that two months is not very long to pack up your whole life and find an alternative. But if you've got a tenant who's causing you problems, then four months is a very, very long time. The other thing that they mentioned was getting rid of mandatory evictions for rent arrears. So at the moment, if a tenant has got a certain level of rent arrears and it's not particularly extreme or hasn't been going on for that long, then if you take them to court to try to get an eviction order, it's up to the judge whether they grant that eviction or not. But if the arrears reach a certain threshold or have been in place for a particular amount of time, then the judge has to grant you possession. They don't have a choice. What the Labour Party is talking about is removing that threshold. So in every case, it's going to be absolutely to the judge's discretion about whether they grant possession or not. This is a continuation of a trend that we've seen for a long time across all parties of more tenant protections. But if the Labour Party does come to power, then more announcements like this certainly will be making landlords a little bit nervous. So all in all, the market is highly uncertain right now, but there's always opportunity at times of uncertainty. Historically, you've always done better by buying when people are nervous rather than when everyone's excited and they're all piling in. As I've said, we're buying at the moment, a large chunk of the Property Hub community is as well. And you should watch this video next, which will tell you how you can get yourself a strong deal by taking advantage of the current market.